Hello, adventurer. Congratulations, you have just landed in Singapore. You've cleared immigrations, collected your luggages, and you're probably standing here in the arrival hall of Changi Airport. But what do you do now? How do you get cash? How about a SIM card for internet? How to get to your accommodations? In this video, we'll answer all that and a lot more to make sure that your first hour in Singapore goes smoothly without a hitch. Firstly, here are some essential information that you should know before your departure. Let's rewind a few hours into the past. This first one can make or break your trip. If you're holding a passport from these following countries, you will need to apply for a visa. But beware of scammy third-party websites that claim to help you apply for a visa. Stick to the official Singapore agency that's called the ICA, which stands for Immigration Checkpoint Authority. And here's a hack that can help you clear Singapore immigration in less than five minutes. Although not everyone needs to have a visa, everybody needs to fill up a Singapore arrival card, also known as the SGAC. The trick is to fill up the SGAC online up to three days in advance prior to your arrival. You can easily find the online form at the ICA website free of charge. But you know what's not free? Luggage space. It's expensive, and if you pack wrongly, it'll be even more expensive. So here are my essential packing list for your trip to Singapore. The weather in Singapore is tropical and sunny, so you can expect it to be hot and humid all year round. To beat the sweltering heat, bring clothes that are comfortable to sweat in. Personally, I prefer to wear polyester shirts and avoid wearing cotton. According to research, although cotton is more absorbent, the problem is it tends to retain your sweat, making it very uncomfortable after you sweat. To complete your protection, bring your favorite hat and sunglasses. Ironically, I also suggest bringing a jacket because some shopping malls in Singapore could get very cold. So a light jacket like this could be very handy. To keep your devices alive, bring an adapter that fits into this three pin books. Or bring these universal adapters and never have to worry which plug to ever bring again. As we're in the tropics, rain is also a daily possibility. Statistically, we see 171 days of rain every year. So keep an umbrella close and your credit cards closer. Back to the present, let's talk about money. Here, we use the Singapore dollars. You can actually avoid all the hassle of carrying too much cash by sticking to your credit card. Almost all shops in Singapore accept credit card as a form of payment. And as long as your card has a Visa or MasterCard logo on it, and this contactless icon, you can use it to take the public transport. But take note, each person will need to have one card. Do note that your credit card provider will charge a daily admin fee for every day that you are using the card for public transport in Singapore. But personally, I feel that the cost is very low compared to buying the daily tourist pass or the cost of buying a new cash card for public transportation and not to mention the excess value in each of the card at the end of your trip. I have a whole other travel guide video that goes through the basics of public transportation in Singapore. So you can check that out later. I still recommend carrying some cash. I suggest about $20 per person per day, mostly for older shops or hawker centers that do not have card payments. To get your cohort cash, you can use these international ATMs that's almost everywhere or the money changes. The airport always has some, but the exchange rates in town, especially around the Raffles Place MRT in this building called The Arcade, is much better. Next, access to the internet is almost as important as access to oxygen. To keep yourself connected throughout your visits in Singapore, the easiest way is to get a prepaid SIM card. From the arrival hall, look out for names such as Singtel or Starhub. They have packages ranging from one week to one month. If you want to extend the validity of your SIM card or add more gigabytes to your data plan, you can just download their mobile app and top up from there. If your phone can support eSIM, it's even better because you don't have to go through the trouble of finding a place to buy a SIM card. If you couldn't get your SIM card at the airport, don't worry, cheer up because you can always get them at convenience stores such as Cheers or 7-Eleven. By the way, if you find this video helpful, please leave a like so that more people can find it. Thank you very much. Are you hungry after a long flight to Singapore? Well, you're in luck because Changi Airport is an excellent place for a bite. 
For good value and local food options, I recommend coming to the Kopitiam Food Court at Terminal 3. They are of very decent quality at a very reasonable price. You can even find Korean, Japanese or Indonesian food over here. For a more posh dining experience, each terminal has some good restaurants. But for a greater array of dining experience, visit the Jewel Shopping Mall. You'll find a lot more international restaurant options, but be prepared to spend at least 20 Singapore dollars per person. The mall is at Terminal 1, but you can easily get here by foot from Terminal 3 and Terminal 2 via all these linkway bridges. Now, for the most important part, how to get to your accommodations. Let me give you an overview of the airport. As of 2024, we have four terminals. Going clockwise from our model, we have T3, T1, T2, which are all within one continuous building, and T4, that's slightly off site. The public buses run underground along a dedicated road that goes through T3, T1, T2, and for some buses, Terminal 4 while the train service runs underground through Terminal 3 and Terminal 2, which are accessible via this walking bridge. And there are also monorail services to get between terminals that's called the SkyTrain. To get to and from Terminal 4, you can take the public or the shuttle bus. So if you're planning to take the train, but you landed in T1, you need to walk or take the SkyTrain to Terminal 3 or Terminal 2. You can also take any bus service and get off at T2, which is only one stop away. Once you're in Terminal 3 or Terminal 2, easily follow the signboard that says Train to City. When taking the train out of the airport, don't be surprised when it stops at Tanamera Station. The train service normally shuttle to and from Tanamera and the airport. So you just have to change train according to your route. To go to the city, change to the train going towards Tuas Link. If you prefer higher speed, and comfort at a premium. You can get taxis from the taxi stands that's in each of the terminals. All the taxis that you get here runs on the meter, but take note, there's a surcharge for airport pickup. I guess that's why they call it Taxi. Personally, I prefer using these ride-hailing apps such as Grab, Gojek, Zig, Ride and Tada because they make it so easy for me to get a car to get from point A to point B. I just need to put in my current location and my destination and it will even show me upfront how much it would cost, which really helps with my trip budgeting. Each terminal has a very convenient pickup point for car pickups. Just follow the signs that says right hailing pickup. Remember to put in the correct door number when you input your pickup location. I recommend downloading these applications in advance because you need to sign up for an account and also link your payment methods. These applications will surely save you a lot of trouble down the road. Regardless of how well prepared you are on your travels, sometimes you still need some help. For example, where is the toilet? Or you need someone to help you take a photo? The good news is it's super easy to get help in Singapore. Most people here speak English as their first language. Many of them speak Mandarin and some also speak Malay, Bahasa Indonesia or Tamil. Apart from the information kiosks that's in every terminal, you can also approach the friendly Singaporeans that's all around you. Although we are known to be very reserved, we are more than happy to help you explore our beloved city. So feel free to reach out, but don't make small talk. If you find me, can lah. But most Singaporeans don't like to have small talks. They find it very awkward. Anyway, that's your first hour. To survive your second hour onwards just as smoothly, check out my Singapore Travel Guide playlist over here. I'll see you there. Your favorite hat? Yeah, that's a good hit. <laughs>